Hey everybody, so we were asked to do a little email bio about ourselves and Angling and Arrows and instead of just sending off an email, I thought it would be a little better to do a video because that's what Angling and Arrows is all about, right Devlin? Yeah. So my name is Steve, I'm 52 years old, I'm married and I'm Devlin's dad and I'm a professional firefighter, that's my full-time career. I'm a lieutenant with 25 years experience in St. John's, Newfoundland and Devlin here is what? Uh, hockey goalie play in house league. And how old are you? Um, ten. What are some of your other hobbies? Um, playing hockey my outdoor rink, and hanging out with dad, and going skidooing, ice fishing, and riding on a quad. So I'm going to get Devlin just to move behind the camera here in a second. And we're going to do a quick little tour of our basement because I think that some of the trophies that we have down here might be the best way to sum up our adventures and some of our hobbies. But my most favorite thing about the outdoor stuff, and since we started YouTube as well, is it's been getting Devlin involved with some of the outdoor stuff. Uh, he's become a really good photographer. He's done some great videos, especially our last bear hunt. So it's great to get him involved because he has a couple of more years yet before he can legally hunt in our province. And as we walk around the room, I'm going to tell you a quick story about some of the animals, and Devlin can probably throw in a story or two on some of the ones that he helped out with. And as you're going to see, that it's not always the size of the trophy that makes the most memories, it's the actual memories themselves. So we'll just do a quick little walk around here, and you guys will get to know us while we're doing it. So this right here was the beginning of my bear hunting career. It was, it's probably been about 10 years or so since I harvested that bear. Uh, I had actually been hunting, I'd seen several bears, but I'd been hunting for a couple of years before I actually got the opportunity to shoot one. And as it turns out, as you can see, it ended up not being real big, but being my first bear and first archery bear, it uh, was pretty special. And the ribbing that I took after shooting it probably more than made up enough stories that I wouldn't have heard if it had been a big bear. Uh, even the taxidermist, when he was mounting it, said that he could do anything I wanted with it except make it look scary. So there you go. Uh, we're just going to move around here. This is a moose that I shot locally. It's my second biggest moose to date. My biggest is actually at a remote cabin. Uh, this over here, this was a special animal. I was invited to go to Hungary and hunt with uh, my friend Albert Laszlo and while I was over there I was allowed to hunt fallow deer at Guth Lodge with my bow which is not something that happens very often and it ended up being a gold medal fallow deer but just the whole experience of getting to hunt in Hungary and experience some of their traditional ways that they still follow it was a, a hunt to remember for sure. So over here uh, we're going to walk past some hockey stuff since Devlin's become a big hockey player He's taken over some of my basement, and I'm okay with that. I don't mind sharing my space with Devlin. So just walking around through here, uh, this was my first Pope and Young Caribou. I shot that several years ago. It uh, qualified for Pope and Young. That's the official plaque right over here. In the same year, I actually won the Provincial Rod and Gun Club competition in two categories. I had the biggest caribou and the biggest black bear. Uh, both of those categories are open to archery and rifle hunters as well. I actually shot both of my animals with a bow, with my elite bow to be more precise. So if you look over here, this is another one over here. So this little caribou over here, this is a woodland caribou. This was a hunt that I uh, planned for several years. It was actually a caribou herd that lives on an island about 30 kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland. And to get there was quite an event. It was a resettled community and I always wanted to go out there. And uh, in probably 20, I'm going to say 2010, that hunt came to fruition. It's probably before that actually, because it was before Devlin was born. Uh, but that hunt came to fruition and it was certainly a hunt to remember, having to travel by longliner and then uh, access some backcountry on the island. So my time outdoors is actually twofold. I love the thrill of the hunt and the chase and I use all the meat. I'm a food hunter more than I am a trophy hunter, although I do love to get a trophy as much as the next person. But as well, it's a great uh, stress relief for me. I love to get outdoors and it's relaxing. The time spent in nature is just phenomenal. I was diagnosed with PTSD several years ago just due to some work stuff and 
being a first responder for almost 30 years catches up with you. So the outdoor activities is certainly something that helps me relax and it's uh, what I call my happy place. But these two animals right here, and the third one is supposed to be right here, but right now it's currently in Reno, Nevada. It just went through panel for Pope and Young. But these animals here, uh, these were three very special animals for me. I've always uh, had a goal of harvesting the Newfoundland Big Three or the Grand Slam in one season. It's generally very hard to do because you can't actually personally get a moose license and a caribou license the same season since they're part of the same draw system. But I'm lucky enough to be able to support a local charity through the charity hunting program. And I had this moose license that year, so that moose was donated entirely to charity. Uh, the Woodland Caribou, and I hope this insert picture comes out here, I'm pointing at it. Uh, I had also had, had a goal of shooting a Woodland Caribou in full velvet. I've shot several caribou over the years, and I've always been fascinated with the velvet, and I think it looks pretty cool. So when I decided that I was going to try that, and I actually drew my tag in May of 2020, I started doing some research online and trying to figure out the best way to cure it. And the process was quite complicated. That's when I came across the product called Velvelac. And I did some research, and it seemed to be a spray-on, walk-away product. So I ordered up a couple of bottles. I went on their website, and I ordered them up early, and they were shipped to Canada. I had them in time for my hunt that year. And I actually took them in the woods. There's a video online showing me cure that. And hopefully the entire hunt will be up on uh, our YouTube channel soon if I can get the footage. But uh, I've got to say the Velvelac product, I, it was simple. I bought the product, carried it in the woods with me, followed their directions. And two years, almost three years later now, uh, the caribou is in Reno for the 32nd biannual Pope and Young Convention. It was measured last Friday down there. I don't know the results yet, but I'm anticipating it's going to be a top 10 world woodland caribou. So I'm hoping to get down to the biannual conference and convention. It's going to be a great event. And hopefully we'll get down there and I'll be able to show you the look and the placement of that uh, woodland caribou and what place in the world it is now currently ranked. And I'll also give you a close-up look of it and what a job Velvelac did curing that. It's such a fantastic product, it's pretty simple, and I actually can't wait to get my hands on some of their uh, skull whitener. They've got Bone Bright and a couple of other new products out that I haven't used yet. And I'd like to try those on some of my bear skulls to freshen those up a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. So the deer I have right here, that was my first deer. I killed that in Alberta about 20 years ago. It was also the first animal that I had taxidermed. As I said, the hunting and stuff, it, it, it's great to get in and go hunting and harvest an animal, but I also just really enjoy the time that I get to spend with Devlin. And this mount right here is also a pretty special one. This is Devlin's first mount, and he's going to explain to you why we have that hanging up here and, and who made it. So, I think before we started the YouTube channel in our old cabin, before the halfway in, or when it was first getting built, I was sick at that cabin. And I built that up there. And what does the plaque say that we have to go with it? Can you read that for us? It says, Devlin, I was at the old cabin when sick. And this is a moose. Yeah, we went to a remote cabin. It's a, it was a 20 minute hike at the time or 30 minute hike. We have a new one since then. And the halfway old, in. The halfway in is our new one. Yeah, that's what we call it. But poor old Devlin was so sick that trip. He was throwing up. He was actually violently ill. And we were only able to hike out because it was too late in the night. So he actually made this, which I'm going to knock down here. So he actually assembled this uh, cutout moose. And just for the memories, we decided to keep it and hang it on the wall. And that's the actual plaque that Devlin wrote at the time. This okay. is where most of our bills goes out. And I've been helping bait bills since I could walk. And the first time when I saw my first bill, and we cured it, and we actually ate it, um, was when we were at Knott's Mountain Outfitters, and it was this one. No. <laughs> and it was this one. <laughs> That's right. So it's been quite special having Devlin with me on a lot of the bear hunts, so it's a great way to get to spend some time with him, and he gets to experience the thrill of hunting. And having Devlin record this hunt was just another whole level that made the hunt so much more special. That bear as well actually qualified for Pope and Young. It measured just over 18 inches. 
and uh, we have a certificate somewhere here to show for it. So over here, I just mentioned earlier about the charity moose license. In Newfoundland, registered charities are allowed to apply for moose license and designate a hunter to hunt that moose and donate the meat to them. So about seven years ago, I became involved with a local charity and uh, I was actually successful seven years in a row in harvesting a moose and I teamed up with a local butcher, uh, Porter's Meats, and they were gracious enough to do the donations of the butchering of the moose. So I just drop it off at the local charity and their guests get to use that meat as they see fit. It's a win-win situation. I really enjoy helping out that charity and the meat certainly doesn't go to waste. This over here was another female bear that I harvested. Uh, this was harvested and there were a couple of great friends of mine. Most of my bear hunting is done either with Devlin or solo. Uh, this bear here was a little over 300 pounds. She was a big sow. And uh, after the hunt, a couple of my great buddies came out. They helped me butcher her up and holler out of the woods. So I have some pretty good memories of that as well. So that quick little tour there just kind of gives you an indication of what myself and Devlin are into. We do a whole lot of fishing as well. You saw a couple of fish there in the videos, I think, black and white that we didn't even mention. No, we didn't see that. There's okay, yeah, there's a couple of fish there. There's one that I caught with my dad when I was Devlin's age. So walking around the room here and showing you these trophies, it's not really, it wasn't really the point to show you what a successful hunter I've been because that's, again, a secondary to all of it. The, uh, the point of it was to show people that you can harvest an animal, and some of these are not big, but it doesn't matter. It's the stories that are attached to these animals. Uh, the whole process of going to Hungary, getting to experience Hungarian culture with my good friend, uh, Laszlo Albert. Uh, the Newfoundland Grand Slam in one year, the process of using Belvalac. I mean, Devlin attended or accompanied me on his first bear hunt. But just getting to hang out with Devlin, I mean, the hunting and fishing. The fishing even more so with Devlin, because right now he's not into the hunting. He's not old enough, but the fishing, he's a pretty good fisherman, so... Just it's pretty special to get to hang out with him and even though I know his interest may change a little bit over the years it's some time that I certainly wouldn't trade for anything up to this point and hopefully we'll get down to Reno to the Pope and Young Biannual Convention. That's our goal now is we're actually we're trying to recruit a couple of sponsors and I know Velvalak has already graciously offered to uh, look after the admittance to that conference, the, uh, the admittance fees, so that's fantastic of those guys. And maybe Elite Archery, you know, we've been on board with them. I've been using their products for quite some time. If they get a look at this video, perhaps they might be willing to help out with maybe some of the transportation costs to get down there. I'd love to attend. I don't know if Devlin will be able to or not. He has school that week. So it would be quite a commitment to take him as well and miss a week's school. But uh, regardless, so I think I'm going to go and we'll see how my woodland caribou measures this year. It should certainly be in the top 10 ever harvested in the world for woodland caribou velvet. And that's going to be, I'm looking forward to seeing the results of that and what everyone down there thinks of the Velvalac product and the job it did curing those antlers. But uh, just a couple of little things to mention before we sign off here is we do have a couple of things coming up in the near future. The Attending the biannual Pope and Young Conference, that's one of my things I'm doing at the end of April. And the other is we have a contest coming up. With our, We said it was going to be our 1,000 subscriber giveaway, didn't we, Devlin? Yeah. But how many subscribers do we have now? Over now we've got a good following on our YouTube channel, so everyone's getting to share in our adventures. But we did say we were going to do a giveaway, and we still do intend to do that. We've teamed up with Notch Mountain Outfitters. They're a great family-run business here in Newfoundland. And we're going to give away a three, three-night, four-day trip, which will hopefully incorporate some uh, spring bear hunting as well as fishing. To Notch Mountain Outfitters. To Notch Mountain Outfitters. I didn't say the name. So they teamed up with us, so we're going to do a draw of that. We're going to announce that contest pretty soon. And if anybody wants to team up with us on that, it would be fantastic. And last but not least, this coming fall, I'm fully hoping to get another Woodland Caribou draw. It takes about three years to get that license. And if all works out this fall, I should have another one. And you've got to set goals for yourself. So hopefully Devlin will get to go with me on this archery hunt. I don't know if he will because... Mom probably won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you will. But the issue there is it's right around the beginning of school. But we'll see the last week in August how it goes. But my goal now is that I've used the Velvalac product, I know it works, and I know how much I need to order. My goal is to get another Velvet Woodland Caribou, and maybe even if one of you guys from Velvalac would like to accompany me on that hunt, as an observer, or perhaps you could film the hunt for us, that would be a whole heck of a lot of fun. I'm sure I could line up maybe a bear tag for you guys while you were here, you never know. Do you think that would be fun to have them go with us? Yeah. Yeah. 
Anyway, buddy, I'm glad that you get to go hunting with me and do all these videos. Love you. Can I get a hug? <laughs>